tick 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 boom oh yeah baby it's that time the days are getting longer and you can hear it the fish are starting to hit the top and you can't fish top water without walking baits so today we're gonna go for a walk baby it's all about the walking bait today on captain corner oh my goodness oh, oh, oh. oh my god oh bang oh my god man did he want that lure you got our top water oh my god yeah there we go and he hammered that too got him. Got him. he hit that so many times seriously look at that that is just insane that's right top water it's got to be one of the greatest ways to target bass especially this time of year you're talking late spring early summer when those bait fish are starting to congregate when the water temperatures are rising and the fish are getting more and more active actively chasing down bait fish there is nothing better than targeting with top water and when they're active like that there is no better way to target them on top than with a walking bait there is a huge variety of walking baits out there all sorts of manufacturers make creating all different kinds they've all got different shapes they've all got different sounds but they all have one thing in common they walk or walk the dog and that's the whole point of it what makes a walking bait a walking bait it's a bait like this it's got no lip to it the eye is generally a little bit more towards the bottom instead of straight off the top and it's got that torpedo shape to it here and the way you're going to work this it's going to walk side to side side to side just like that just like an erratic bait fisher trying to get away from something walking side to side or walking the dog they make a lot of noise a lot of commotion and they drive bass wild today on captain's corner i'm going to break down everything you need to know about walking baits how to effectively use them how i choose what baits to use what gear you should be throwing your walking baits on and show you just how effective they can absolutely be. Oh, oh my goodness. That was awesome. <laughs> That's a good fish too. That's a good fish too. Yeah. Sweet, dude. <laughs> he hit that so many times. Yeah. I oh. <laughs> he wanted that. He hit that like three times. Yeah, he did. I only ended up with one little, one of all those hooks in them. Yeah, oh, there it is. Look at that, guys. <laughs> nice three. Man, he was so aggressive coming after this thing, though. That is just flipping awesome. Oh. Right next to the boat, even. Right next to the boat. Walking baits cover a lot of water in a, in a short period of time. You can cast them a million miles. You can move them fast, but you can also move them pretty slow. Covering a lot of water, especially open water, there is no better bait than a walking bait. So what makes a walking bait a walking bait is the shapes. Almost all of them are going to have this very similar shape and style to them. They look like a little cigar. They got a pointed nose to it and the eye is generally down near the bottom. Rather than straight off the top, it's down near the bottom. That's what helps give it that walking side to side action. They all generally share that same profile, like a little torpedo or a little cigar. And they are designed with a keeled bottom to be able to walk side to side as you snap the slack in your line. Very, very simple, but absolutely deadly. Some manufacturers have evolved different mouths on them where they got a little bit more of a cup to the mouth so they can spit and pop a little bit more water as you're being able to walk them. Kind of like a hybrid between a popper and a walking bait. It's gonna give you that same walking action but spit a little bit more at the same time. These kind of baits work great when you really don't wanna to have to move it too far. When you're kind of trying to work tight to cover or in small pockets, trying to keep it more in one place rather than covering an entire large area. But no matter what shape, what size, they all have that same action to them. They're all designed to walk the dog side to side. And that greatly mimics a bait fish trying its hardest to get the heck away from whatever's chasing it. Nothing will drive a bass crazier than a bait fish running for its life. Whoa. There you go. There you go. Oh, that was a big fish, dude. See that weight come after it? I bet that's what I saw. Dude, another wake. No way. Look at that wake. Look at the size of that wake. Got him. Got him. 
Yeah, look at him. Oh, that's a good one. Keep him down. Dude, good fish. Good fish. Good fish. Oh. There's, geez, there's five giants chasing him, dude. Get one right behind it. Oh my God, double up, double up. This guy. Oh my god, it's a huge fish. You get him? Yes! That's at least a five. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. You did it again, man. Every time, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. And I barely had it. Look at it. I got one little hook in his corner of his lip. Let me see <sighs> Turn the hook set. I want to see the hook. <sighs> Oh, guys, seriously, look at that. That is just insane. So yes, there are literally hundreds of walking baits out there. And let me help you break it down a little bit to try to decide what walking bait you want to use when you're out there. There are a bunch of different, different factors in each bait that help me determine which bait I'm going to throw today. They come in a large variety of different sizes, styles, shapes, and even sounds. And all those factor into what bait I choose to throw today. Baits like the Super Spook Junior. This is a good size, an intermediate size. It's not too big and it's not too small. It covers a good variety of bait fish sizes out there. And it's got a nice loud thump to it. it makes a good bassy thump to it as you're going through the water. Click, 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 click. Drives bass really wild. But some days they're gonna want something a little bit bigger or they're gonna want something a little bit smaller. And when they're really, really aggressive and they're moving fast and they're competing with each other, you want something that makes a lot of noise. That simple thump, thump, thump might not be enough. That's where I'll reach for something like a Lucky Craft Sammy. You hear the difference in the noise. It's got little glass beads in there, little higher pitch noise of it. You can move, move in this faster. It's going to be a tick, 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 rather than a thunk, 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 if you catch my drift. Sound plays a big difference in what baits they're going to choose to eat, in my personal opinion. And that's why I'm a really big fan of these Livingston walking bosses. They're a big bait. They have a big beefy profile, but they have a fantastic sound to them. They got the big thunk and they got those little glass beads in there, but they also have a little trick to them. Livingston Lures has EBS technology. It's a little electronic bait and it's, this thing even chirps. I've literally had bass come up and slam this thing two, three times without even moving it, just from that little chirp, chirp, chirp. So sound makes a big difference in your top water walking baits. Sometimes you know they're there, but they're just not hitting. They just don't seem to really be reacting to your walking bait. Maybe all you need to do is throw a different sound at them. This is a Lucky Craft Gunfish. I mean, same makers as the Sammy, but it's got a ton of little tiny beads in it. But it's a little more of a finesse style, a little smaller, little smaller bait, a little more finesse. You can work it a lot slower, but still make a very erratic noise on each little pop. And sometimes that is the absolute key to get them to strike. When you're having trouble really getting them to strike, try switching to something with a little bit smaller profile that makes a little higher pitch, a little more noise. There's one. There he is, decent. Oh, that's a good one. Be good one. Yeah, better. Yeah. Is that on the gun crowd? Uh, uh, gun, oh. Gunfish Junior. Barely hooked. Barely hooked. Ooh, decent fish. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. There you go. <laughs> that's a, you barely got him hooked. Nice fish. Literally got one tiny little treble on the top of the lip. There it is. I'm glad we came back. Need some fish. Nice one today. Nice. A couple of pounds. Yeah. On that little micro gunfish junior topwater. Whoosh. Now, as far as colors go, when you're selecting your walking baits out there, it's it's a pretty natural thing. For the most part, you're targeting fairly aggressive fish. They're moving pretty quick, chasing down schools of bait fish. You're gonna really wanna match the hatch and pay attention to the water clarity. They are often looking at the bait 
from the bottom from down below so when you've got a dark overcast days low light conditions things like that it's often better to throw something with a little darker profile for it on the bottom an orange belly or even a darker belly that it's going to give a bigger contrast up against that darker sky bright bright sunny day something with a lot more reflective silver and white is going to do a lot better you don't have to worry about that profile they're seeing it they're getting a good look of it but it's got that little extra flash and that little more and a little brighter than those other ones that's my that might be the trick to get you more bites on that particular day and of course in darker water you want to use darker colors in clearer water you want to use more natural and lighter colors but the key is we're mimicking bait fish so try to match the hatch if you're on a lake where you know they're eating a lot of bluegill look for those bluegill patterns if you're on a lake where you know they're feeding heavily on shad get the shad colors if you're on a gen generic lake where they're feeding on shad shiner bluegill anything they can get a hold of then you can feel free to go ahead and get something a little bit crazier that's going to stand out a little bit more that may be the key too but when it comes to selecting colors i like to try to select the colors that best suit the water clarity whether it's overcast or bright and sunny and try to match the hatch as best as possible Got him. Good one. It's not that big. It's the right species, though. I figured they got to be here. It's not bad. No, it's still. still a chunker. <sighs> Boom. Oh, bang. Right on. Second cast. Oh, yeah. He's decent too. Second cast on the, the big evergreen. And we got ourselves a decent bass. Woohoo! Yeah! Check that out, guys. Right on. <laughs> Loving it. Loving it. There we go. Great big evergreen. Second cast. Got us a nice bass. Working a walking bait is extremely simple. What you're trying to do is get it to walk side to side on a nice even cadence. Most effective way to do that is to make sure you have a little slack in your line. Every time you snap the tip of your rod, it snaps that little bit of slack and that's what gets it to walk side to side in a really neat, nice cadence. If you don't have enough slack in your line, you have too tight of a line, it'll tend to just slide that bait along slide it along and it's not going to have that good presentation that a walking bait should have make sure you've got a little bit of slack in that line and you're working the slack only reel up whatever you snap some days they're going to want it moving a lot faster in a steady straight line some days they're going to want that little pause so adjust your cadence when you're out there let the fish tell you what they want today what gear you use when you're working walking baits is extremely important I like a shorter rod, the six foot eight to seven foot range, somewhere in there. You're gonna be working that bait with your rod tip pointed down. Anything over seven feet, it tends to hit the water. It's just hard to get that proper cadence working right. I like a shorter rod. A nice medium power rod is plenty of power for at working open water walking baits. The most important thing is you wanna have a nice fast tip to it that could really work that little bit of slack in that line the whole time. So a shorter six foot eight to seven foot rod, medium power with a fast action tip is an excellent rod for walking baits. Cast King makes the Cast King Speed Demon Bass Series. This is actually a jerk bait rod. It's six foot eight, it's a medium power, and it's got a fast action tip. Perfect rod for working top water for me. But the most important thing is make sure you have a good fast reel. You need a reel in the seven to ones, eight to ones, or even nine to one to be able to catch up to that little bit of slack, to be able to catch up to that fish that just grabbed it and is running towards you, to get that line up there as fast as you can and be able to set those hooks as quickly as you possibly can. To keep those little treble hooks on every walking bait firmly pinned in that bass's mouth. When it comes to the line, I have actually become a very big fan of working braided line on my top water. I like the sensitivity and stiffness of that braided line while I'm working that bait. But braid has zero stretch, and that's a big no-no on almost any treble hook lure. That zero stretch is really gonna help pull those hooks right out of that fish's mouth. I use braid, but I tie on a mono filament leader, but just a short one. A one foot monofilament leader. Monofilament has a stretch, but it floats still. Remember, fluorocarbon sinks. You're working baits on top. You don't want a line that pulls them down. This short little one foot leader is gonna work like a little shock absorber or like a bungee cord at the end. It's really gonna help set, drive those treble hooks home, but also keep them pinned as the fish surges and jumps and tries its hardest to get rid of those hooks out of its mouth. Typically, I'm gonna run like a 30 pound braid 
with about a 15 pound monofilament leader. Another bonus is to that is straight braid tends to wrap up in that front hook here when you're casting and that thing circles through the air. That little monofilament leader keeps it a little stiffer and really avoids getting wrapped up in those hooks. Pro tip, I like to tie a little snap right onto that line. You can quickly change baits in and out. It gives it a little bit more room to work back and forth inside of that clip and it gives it even better action out there and saves you from retying leaders, which we all hate. There is no doubt guys, when it's top water time and that top water bite is on, learning how to use, properly use a walking bait can greatly increase your bass game out there. Get yourself a variety of walking baits. Get out there and throw some walking baits. You're gonna catch a ton of bass when they're hitting that top, throw a walking bait. There's nothing better. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned a little something. If you did, make sure you smash the heck out of that like button. And leave a comment for anything else you'd like to see us film out here. We'll do our very best to make a video out of each and every one of those. But most importantly guys, subscribe to the channel. And stay subscribed because there's plenty more coming right here. I'm Captain Mikey, signing out. The future is bright. You keep those lines.